Hello, Beverly Troop. Welcome back. I'm the real Andy of Beverly Hills, and welcome to another piece of tea of the day on this Thursday. Girl, get ready because today we are talking about part two of the reunion of the Real Housewife of Salt Lake City. And I mean, it was amazing, it was insane, it was crazy. And of course, like so many opinions that we're going to get down to it, okay? But before we start, guys, I have a big announcement to make. Officially, officially, guys, a lot of you have been asking me for this. Well, I have been working on it, and I'm so happy to announce that my podcast, Let's Talk About This Mess, is officially on Spotify, and now you can find it not only on Spotify, but everywhere else you uh, listen to your podcast, okay? So my weekly podcast is back, you know. Uh, you can find the whole first season, the whole 13 episodes of the first season are already there. The link is going to be, of course, in the description below, but you can just go to Spotify and just put, let's talk about this mess or the real Andy of Beret Hills, and you will find me there. I'm so excited. I'm going to be doing... Uh, you know, my, my weekly podcast where we're going to be talking about Bravo, where we're going to be talking about everything. And um, sometimes I'm going to have a special guest, you know, interviews. I actually already have a very, very uh, amazing interview for next week. So, girl, I, I just want to thank every single one of you because you have been so supportive of this. And uh, I mean, none of this will be possible without you. So make sure to please go to your Spotify and, you know, rate the podcast, or listen to the episodes, uh, leave your comments, but also subscribe or follow the podcast, you know, it's free, so don't worry. Now, if you are part of my Patreon, my Patreon still is going to be active because with Patreon, you will still going to have early access to episodes and exclusive tea that I'm going to be dropping on my Patreon, Okay. So I'm gonna be a little bit of like everywhere right now. And of course, you know, here on YouTube, I will always be here uh, giving you all the tea that you love, okay? So now you know, let's talk about this mess every single week on Spotify or wherever you get your podcast. Uh, I wanna welcome the new people. If you are new here, welcome to the Verbally Troop. We have a lot of fun. We spill the tea all the time. We talk about Bravo, pop culture, reality TV, and so much more. So you know what to do. Subscribe, 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 and hit the notification bell, guys, because yes, this podcast is not the only surprise that I'm gonna be bringing this year. There are more surprises coming soon, so you always have to like stay tuned, all right? Okay, so let's talk about Salt Lake City. Oh, God, this second part. Look, I'm going to go through little parts of the reunion, but the main theme of part two of the reunion is the lies, the lies, the lies of Monica Garcia. Like, it's just non-stopping. Like, I don't understand what this girl is trying to do with the amount of like misinformation that she puts out there, how the way that she lies about everyone, her own mother, like everything is just, it's just so bad, okay? Like she tries and tries and she keeps acting like a victim and she keeps trying to cry and she keeps trying to be this poor girl and it's just not working out because you can you can see through the bullshit right now, okay? It's so embarrassing and it's so cringy to keep watching this Monica girl taking like shit as she goes. I think she's literally making shit up as she goes at the reunion, you know, and one one moment she's saying one thing, then she's saying another thing, then it's her mom's fault, then it's Lisa's fault, then it's Angie's fault, like, it's all like a whole thing, you know, she throws Mary under the bus, she's like, she's, I mean, you can tell that she's literally drowning, and she's trying to, like, grasp for air, and she's just, like, don't giving a fuck about everyone else, you know, in the, in, in, in the meantime, and it is just so, so bad, um, some people will say like, oh, don't you feel bad for her? I just don't, you know? You know that I have, I am very em empathetic to 
other peoples. I usually understand that we don't live in a world that is white, uh, black or, or white. You know, there is a lot of gray in the middle. You know, I live. I, I actually give a lot of housewives and Bravo Liberty a lot of space to you know um, mess it up. You know, and to live life because that's the world that we live in. But with Monica Garcia, the problem is that is she is such a pathological liar and she just don't on will never take any accountability and she just wants the world to see her as this poor person when she was the one who created this whole mess um in the first place you know she is the one who is just doing the worst i mean it's really really bad you know so i that's why i cannot feel bad for her you know i just need her to completely uh leave you know and completely go all right so let's start going like little by little okay um i have you know my my little notes that i did on x uh, of course we're gonna start the show with angie checking the f out of monica i mean that clap back it is so good you know when she says like why are you spending your kids money on a bag girl it's like it, it that's one of my main questions you know it's like if you are supposed to be so broke if you are supposed to be so bad you know that you cannot even take your daughters on vacations why are you spending the little money that you have from the company that you don't even want to run in buying freaking Louis Vuittons and fake uh, and, and Chanel's and like all of that. Why? Why? I, just, I can't, you know. Um, then she goes on into the whole mother situation. This is so funny because I feel that Andy doesn't really like, I mean, I think Andy, it's kind of like a, like she watched the show as a random fan of the show will watch it you know meaning that she never really goes deep into what is happening behind here on the streets or everything you know so you know that it's a different experience when you watch the show as someone who doesn't care about anything else only like putting your tv you know and putting play and watching the show and it's a different thing when you start seeing all the shit that is happening that is going on the blogs, on the internet, on everything, you know, because it gives you way more perspective, right? And it really gives you a clear, um, how you say that, like a clear uh, vision of, of who are these people on these shows. And I feel that Andy Cohen is that way. Like, I don't, I don't think he really goes deep because he's constantly trying to just talk about things that happen on the show. And it's like, girl, it's 2024, you know, at this point, you need to know what is happening over here. Because every single time that he will talk about Monica's mom, he will just make these little comments about things that we saw on the show. And it's like, at this point, it's like, oh, but have you been reading what Monica's mom is putting out there as well? Have you been seeing how Monica has been treating her mom so bad that the only way for her mom to have a voice is by responding through Twitter, you know, because Monica is not giving her a, a, a voice or a platform. Bravo is not giving her a voice or a platform. How is she going to defend herself against this girl who keeps lying and lying all the time, you know? And yes, you know, a lot of people is like, but that's her mom. She should have her back. And that is true. But when your daughter is a psychopath, you cannot keep having her back. You know, do you think that uh, Jeffrey Dahmer's uh, parents should have their back, you know, or, uh, or any of the other like, you know, uh, you know what I mean? You know, like serial killers. No, no. At some point, their parents need to know, like, you are making a fool of yourself. You are wrong, you know, and they need to call it out. And this is the way that it is. I mean, there is there is no other platform. So Linda she has to defend herself the only way that she can now it's not that i am 100 percent on team linda because we all know that both of them are crazy right but i do have to say monica's lies are just so out of control that to me it's okay that linda is going out there trying to put her truth as well you know um 
watching Monica fight with her mom about the Angie event, knowing that both of them just wanted to create a scene, hits so different, you know, because it, it really shows the delusion that they wanted to be when, when Monica's mom says, like, you are an actress, you'll be supposed to be doing this, you'll be supposed to be doing that. That's what you can tell and you say, like, oh, my God, they was just trying so hard. They are, this is literally fans who don't understand how the show works other than what they think it needs to be done out there. And they fail miserably, you know? Uh, Monica doesn't care to destroy her mom as long as she keep being the victim and get coins. And it is so insane to watch how she keeps having you know all of her fake uh, her fake ass tears you know and she's like oh my god oh oh and, it, and i was like where is the tear where is the tear girl it, it was just nowhere to be found i was like oh my god this girl is just so fake you know like the, the eye was so dry I was like, oh my God, no, someone bring some water to that eye because it's thirsty, you know? It was just too much. Um, uh, the only thing Monica's mom has been doing is defending herself against her psychotic daughter lies. And I do believe that Bravo should have had Linda at the reunion. And I will even go so far into saying that was Monica, the one who did not allow her mom to be at the reunion. Because it will even give, it will even make good TV to have Monica and her mom going against each other at the reunion. Why was she, wasn't she there? Why? You know? Um, I, so, uh, and I, I, let's go back to Andy. You know, Andy's always saying like, oh yeah, your mom did this and your mom did that. You know, or, of course, maybe it's because you're having this uh, trauma, whatever, you know. And it's so funny because... Monica, she knows how to manipulate people. And one of the best techniques to manipulate people is just to um, to say yes, you know, to, um, what is the word? Yes, to basically to yes, say yes to whatever the other person is saying. To agree, agree, that's the word. Oh my God, Latino moment. Uh, to agree with what the other person is saying because that gave the sensation that, oh, this person is on my side, you know? So whatever Andy was saying, you know, uh, and Monica was like, yes, you're so right. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my God, yes, you know, you got me, Andy. You got me. Don't fire me, Andy, because you, you and I, you know, it was like, oh my God, manipulation 101, okay? Now, uh, the whole Angie falling down the stairs. Girl, girl. I was like, I remember when it happens and this bitch was trying to make the world believe that there was these horrible stairs you know, and that she just fall down the stairs down and she was bleeding and she was like, oh my God, like this, you know, and like at, at the bottom of the stairs, you know, and they need to call 911 or some bullshit, you know, and she was gonna like sue Angie because she was not following the regulations or whatever shit that she was trying to do, you know, and I saw that footage. She didn't fall down the stairs. She slipped a couple, you know, uh, steps, okay? How is this girl gonna come here and try to come for Angie for that stupid little part? I'm so happy that it was kind of caught on camera to show us how much uh, Monica lies and lies and lies, okay? Um, look, I didn't like that Monica it was throwing Meredith under the bus and saying like, well, I actually talked to Meredith and she said that we can go for her house, you know? Look, I do believe that Meredith said that because that's a very Meredith thing to say. And I think anyone who hates another person, you know, it's it, it, you can you can definitely say that like just to say it, right? Uh, but if I was Meredith, this will have been the moment to pop off, you know? And I will have been like, bitch, you are lying. I never said that to you. You are a fucking liar, you know. Drag her. Do something, you know. But Mary is like, I never said that. I never said that. I never said that. No, no. It was like, girl, it's so obvious that you said it. You know, <laughs> I mean, it, I just, I was like, girl. 
Meredith really needs, even she is about to disengage of the show completely or something needs to change because girl, this was the moment. This was the moment, okay? To completely join the other side and being like, I'm completely anti-Monica and I don't want anything to do with this mess, you know? Um, let's see what else do I have over here. Oh my God, when Monica start explaining the 100 names that she has, I was like, it doesn't even make sense. It's like, this is my mom's last name. This is my father's last name. This is my maiden last name. This is the my housekeeper last name. This is the dog's uh, sister uh, last name, you know? I was like, what? Darnell, Delgado, Garcia, uh, Nikki, Fowler. I was like, that shit doesn't work like that, you know? You, you have your last name. Maybe you change it when you get married period and let's say that you are latino you know and you have in latin america you usually have two last names which is your father last name followed by your mother last name okay that will make her monica delgado garcia if i'm right but the mom doesn't have the last name either i mean the whole thing is just a mess to me she explaining why she had like a thousand last name was literally like watching Erica Jane explaining the whole car accident with Tom um, with Tom Gerard. Do you remember that? It was literally the same thing. She was telling so much lies that she doesn't even know how to maintain the whole web of lies that she has been spilling over there. You know. Uh, then we have Mary Cosby, which girl. The unhingement of Mary Cosby is just too much. I don't even know what she's doing there, to be very honest with you. She's not, I mean, I keep saying, to me, she's not comedy relief. I mean, she's comedy relief on the sense that we are laughing at her, but we are never laughing with her, you know? So it's kind of like cringy to watch. She is in her own world that no one understands, you know? And her opinions are so weird. Of course, she's the only one supporting uh, Monica Garcia because, of course, the co-leader needs to go after the uh, supporting uh, the uh, the fraud one, right? And I was like, is she trying to, you know, bring Monica to the church? You know, because this is how this church works. You know, they found the people with the weakest mind and they just like, you know, read them in so i was like what is happening over here but of course mary was going to be um uh supporting monica i love that they show they show the uh recording that i leak to everyone exclusively you know the mary cosby one where monica is is calling mary cosby a dumb bitch girl i love it love it love it because i mean and, and mary is like so confused she doesn't really know what to do next mary 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 i just to be very honest with you i do not need mary anymore i think the show needs to move on with of course lisa barlow heather gay whitney rose mary marks angie katzaneva and bring us like a new one two housewives I could do seven two new housewives you know who hopefully are crazy but not to this level you know and hopefully they are rich as well and and maybe a friend of the show whatever you know what I mean let's see what is gonna happen next uh, Mary trying to say that everything about her church are lies girl I don't even want to go there because we have talked about so many of of, of those times where like um, the church you know and all the shit around the church that i don't i don't really want to go there anymore okay but we all know what her church is about so it is what it is and whitney okay then you know there's mary start going after everyone especially after whitney and i just feel i don't understand why whitney keeps being so afraid of mary you can see it on her voice you can see it on her face she is like so constantly afraid all the time i don't know i know i honestly like i don't get it i hope that she's gonna i like also it was kind of like with mary like this is your time to shine this is your time to like show something better you know like 
Like, don't be afraid of Mary. You know what? What do you think that she's this bitch is going to do? You know? Well, that's it, guys. That's the whole recap for today. Um, let me know what you guys think on the comments below. Let me know what you guys are thinking about the whole drama that is happening between them. And uh, what are your thoughts of part two of the reunion? I cannot wait that we are just a very small time, uh, just a week ago, a week ago, just a week ahead. My English is everywhere today, so guys, sorry. Uh, from the actual finale of The Real Housewife of Salt Lake City. So I'm, I have to go now. But, yes, leave me all of your comments, guys. Leave me all of your comments. Are you enjoying it? Let me know. And if you want to get all the tea related to The Real Housewife of Salt Lake City or any of the other Bravo shows, make sure to like this video, share this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'll see you around. See ya. Bye.